For decades, scientists and engineers have talked about using the dusty lunar surface to manufacture solar panels. All of the key ingredients for solar cells are present in this rocky and dusty regolith on the surface of the moon. Silicon, iron, magnesium, aluminum, and more. The abundance of these ingredients has led to hundreds of research papers exploring the idea since lunar soil was returned to Earth during the Apollo program, but relatively little engineering development. In other words, we don't know whether covering the moon with solar panels is simply a great science fiction idea or if it would actually work. But now, we may have an answer to the question. Last week, in a blog post not even promoted by the company's Twitter account or news release, Blue Origin quietly said its Blue Alchemist program has been working on this very topic for the last two years. This sudden announcement shocked rivals SpaceX and scientists. But can Jeff Bezos really make this operate for real? Let's expose everything about it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. With Blue Origin's path to putting a rocket into orbit certainly still a long way off, the company, founded by Jeff Bezos, has made both solar cells and electricity transmission wires from simulated lunar soil, a material that's chemically and mineralogically equivalent to lunar regolith. The engineering work is based on a process known as molten regolith electrolysis, and Blue Origin has advanced the state of the art for solar cell manufacturing. In this process, a direct electric current is applied to the simulated regolith at a high temperature above 1600 degrees Celsius. Through this electrolysis process, iron, silicon, and aluminum can be extracted from the lunar regolith. Blue Origin says it's produced silicon to more than 99.999% purity through molten regolith electrolysis. The key advance made by Blue Alchemist is that its engineers and scientists have taken the byproducts of this reaction and these materials alone to fabricate solar cells as well as the protective glass cover that would allow them to survive a decade or longer on the lunar surface. Blue Origin will attempt to market the technology to NASA for use by the Artemis program to return humans to the moon in a sustainable way. NASA and its international partners seek to differentiate Artemis from the Apollo program by more extended stays on the moon and building infrastructure such as power systems. Although our vision is technically ambitious, our technology is real now, the company said in its blog post. Blue Origin's goal of producing solar power using only lunar reserves is aligned with NASA's highest priority Moon to Mars infrastructure development objective. This is a notable research breakthrough as the same electrolysis process could also be used to produce metals for building habitats and other structures, as well as oxygen. These are all important for living off the land if humans are to avoid the expense of needing to bring everything from Earth to live and work in space. While it's a long way from lab experiment to manufacturing on the moon, these experiments are a critical first step. Blue Origin recently split its advanced development program's business unit into two units, with one focused on in-space systems such as Orbital Reef Space Station and another focused solely on lunar activity. It's exciting to see Blue Origin begin to publicly discuss its plans for a fully reusable lunar architecture. The company's been hiring actively in the area for years, and there's a lot of interesting work like Blue Alchemist going on behind the scenes. However, keep in mind, it will not be any easier than making a rocket in orbit. The company has to make an enormous leap from crafting solar cells out of fake dirt in earthbound labs to accomplishing the same thing on the harsh surface of the moon. Anyway, this is a dream that's decades in the making. The idea of tapping the moon's resources to support human settlements called in situ resource utilization or ISRU in technical speak has only recently moved out of the realm of science fiction. There just isn't enough of the stuff on Earth to hand it out to every commercial space company trying to run experiments with regolith. Instead, an entire cottage industry for regolith stimulants has cropped up to feed those experiments. You can even buy the fake lunar dirt online. Blue Origin says it made its own regolith stimulants to be chemically and mineralogically equivalent to the real thing. But then again, the composition of lunar regolith varies from region to region on the moon. In addition, according to scientists, one of the biggest challenges is that regolith is abrasive and has sharp particles that can damage equipment and machinery. 
Additionally, the manufacturing process would require significant amounts of energy and resources, including water, which is scarce on the moon. Another challenge is the fact that the regolith is exposed to the harsh radiation environment of space, which could degrade the quality of the silicon over time. Another real world or real moon challenge will be to find a way to regenerate the high temperature necessary to melt the regolith. Both Blue Origin rely on reactors to reach temperatures above 1500 degrees Celsius, and you have to ship the tools to the moon, right? And getting people back to the moon at all is still years away. NASA's Artemis III moon landing mission has already been delayed several years, likely pushed out to 2026 at the earliest. Anyway, Blue Origin needs to finish their current projects and get to orbit first. This will at least not disappoint NASA and waste more tax money of the American people because NASA selected Blue Origin to launch the Mars Magnetosphere Study Mission on New Glenn, not SpaceX. Founded in 2000 by Amazon founder Jeff Bezos, Blue Origin has been funded solely by Bezos himself. It's estimated that so far he's invested $8 billion of his own wealth. But a key part of Blue Origin's business plan is to take revenues from government contracts. The most important part of that drive is to help fund the development of New Glenn. And obviously, NASA doesn't want to over-rely on SpaceX rockets and help encourage competition in that private spaceflight sector. NASA did announce February 9th that selected New Glenn for the launch of the two escape and plasma acceleration and dynamic explorers called Escapade spacecraft. The rocket would launch Escapade in late 2024, with that spacecraft entering orbit around Mars 11 months later. The award, a task order under NASA's Venture Class Acquisition of Dedicated and Rideshare, or VADR, contract, and that's the first NASA's issued for New Glenn, the large rocket Blue Origin has been working on for several years, but has yet to launch. Escapade follows a long tradition of NASA, Mars, science, and exploration missions, and we're thrilled NASA's launch service program has selected New Glenn to launch the instruments that will study Mars' magnetosphere. That according to Jarrett Jones, Senior Vice President for New Glenn at Blue Origin, in a company statement. Each Escapade spacecraft will weigh about 120 kilograms, excluding propellant, and that's according to a 2022 conference paper about the mission. That suggests that New Glenn, designed to place up to 45 metric tons in the low Earth orbit, is significantly oversized to launch Escapade as a dedicated mission. New Glenn's powered by the BE-4 engines, each using liquid oxygen and liquefied natural gas, which will fly for the first time this year on ULA's Vulcan Centaur heavy lift launch vehicle. It is possible that New Glenn could get an orbital flight test later this year. According to the same government procurement database, February 10th, the Blue Origin Award for launching Escapade is valued at $20 million, with $6 million obligated to date. Escapade has a total cost of $78.5 million, and that's a figure that includes launch and project reserves. Well, that'll about wrap it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.